So let's move on to our next very equally inter interesting session where we are again talking about the young generation, the millennial frenzy, Indian realities, evolving disruptions. So yes, a lot of disruptions are happening in the real estate sector and that is what we are going to talk about. Let me welcome our moderator of the session, Mr. Piyush Gupta, Managing Director, Capital Markets and Investment Services India, Collier's. With two decades of experience, Piyush is responsible for developing capital markets business in India. He's leading the client acquisition, developing institutional relationships with Indian and global funds, sovereign funds, banks, NBFCs, AIFs for capital markets business. He has proven expertise in real estate investments, asset management, and exit strategy, deployment, and business development. Uh, a very warm welcome to Mr. Piyush Gupta as the moderator of the session. Let me now uh, invite our expert panel in an alphabetical order. Our first panel member, I introduce Mr. Anuj Goradia, Director at Ghostly Realty. Anuj Goradia has been actively leading the brand transformation by bringing in a new vibe and modernistic waves, ways of doing business. He brings a global mindset and oversees project planning, design, and construction, and he has played a pivotal role in streaming the pre-sales, marketing sales, CRM, and other verticals through the use of technology. Our next panel member is Mr. Jay Mozaria, Director of Raj Group and President Naretko NextGen India. Jay stands at the forefront of the fastest growing companies under Raj Group. He spent the past 11 years evangelizing shift to redevelopment in real estate business. He commenced his career in real estate at a young age of 19, and he is responsible for companies' acquisitions, operations, sales, and finance. Our next panel member is Mr. Nayan Raheja, Director of Raheja Developers. Architect Nayan Raheja is a passionate entrepreneur and has been a growth driver for bringing Raheja developers into a new era. Under his ages, the company has seen tremendous change in last few years due to the change of business strategy from mid-level housing to luxury housing. Our next eminent panel member, I introduce Ms. Pushpa Bekhtar, Executive Director, DLF Retail. In a current role, Pushpa is responsible for providing executive leadership and management of DLF retail malls, including premium and luxury across marketing, leasing, finance, and operation. She aspires to not only expand DLF's footprints in retail, but make the brand synonymous with an unparalleled holistic retail experience. Our next panel member is Rishab Saroya, founder legend Saroya, president-elect Naretko NextGen. Rishabh Saroya is a young professional skilled in negotiation, sales, asset management, investment properties, and real estate transactions. Under his leadership, the company now has projects in Mumbai, Pune, Hyderabad, and Bangalore, and an expertise in a wide, wide range of projects from scrap re rehabilitation to luxury projects. Our next and final member, I introduce Mr. Sarthad Kaur, Director Gauss Group, also Joint Secretary Credit Western Europe, UP. Sartak, the young scion of the group, provides a new direction to the business with his progressive ideas. He has brought significant developments in the functioning of the group and plans to take the company forward while still preserving its 24, 25 years, more than 25 years old values. So this is our eminent panel. And Piyush, I hand it over to you now. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Sapna. Uh, thanks, Realty Plus, for having me here. And I, I think it's always been a pleasure to be part of Realty Plus events uh, consistently. I think good afternoon to all the audience and a very warm welcome to all the uh, fellow panelists. Uh, uh, real estate in India, you know, has always been very close to people's hearts and mind both. Uh, the decisions aren't just subject to you know, financial decisions, but uh, also it's got a lot to with the uh, emotions. Hence, the constant changes are imperative. Uh, whether we call it disruptions or evolving to meet current generation's expectations. Uh, I think it will be very interesting to hear views uh, with all the panelists on such evolving changes, uh, whether it's on buying uh, preferences, what do uh, customers are now thinking, millionaires are now thinking, uh, evolving the strategies on marketing, sales from a developer perspective, how we're seeing retail uh, consumption and also uh, uh, the newer age, uh, 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 the the products like shared living, uh, you know, whether it's on student living, senior housing, and the entire thing on flight to quality, uh, which has been the uh, I think the key word for last couple of years. Uh, to start, maybe you know, uh, uh, maybe I can invite in Anuj, uh, you know, to come in here. 
uh, anuj uh, you know you know you all have you know for decades done you know mid income affordable or even you know upscale developments large township developments and and specifically if at all you see you know the trend uh, you know what has changed in last 2 to 3 years time how you see uh, uh, from a buyer's perspective how the expectations has changed uh, i think so one uh, from the what do they look for a developer and what uh, changes you think they expect in a project from a buyer's perspective um uh, thank you sapna and piyush thank you for having all of us on the um reality plus panel for today's webinar um uh, to um get back to piyush and your um uh, question just um wanted to firstly state that see um housing over the years has changed drastically be it the way housing sales have been carried out in the early 1990s early 2000s and post 2010s it was when there was less of an importance on a sample flat show flat sales office model walk through and uh, with times changing all of these factors have become a basic hygiene which is required by any developer i think across the country to actually launch a project earlier we used to have engineers or other staff at site who would transact on properties and do transactions in their free time now all developers have a dedicated sales and marketing team who work on it and the market has even changed from earlier being a um being a sellers market to now being a buyers market it's always the customer who is at the forefront of all your discussions so um we have seen in terms of how customers have changed and they have changed their um decision making is the level of trust and importance placed in the developers past record past experience talking to a developers old customers or going and seeing their old projects how is the clubhouse maintained how is the retail aspect maintained how the societies and lobbies maintained has really become of a forefront very very important compared to how back in the day it was looked at but it wasn't looked at in a very very important manner and uh, always we are seeing back in the day customers used to um pre pandemic smaller homes especially in mmr were in high demand however during the pandemic customers have realized the challenges faced by the families staying in smaller apartments and the trend has gradually changed from buying a one and a half bed to a proper two bed or buying a two and a half bed with like a studio room to a large three bed instead so we are seeing ticket sizes are increasing as well be it across thane shilfata kalyan or even kandivali borivali and in central markets of adala and sain great uh, thanks uh, anuj and i think you brought out i think the two three key points uh, i think one is on the buyer experiences uh, you know uh, it's a uh, uh, and today it's uh, the way market has moved is becomes more buyers market uh, uh, so uh, the entire flight to quality and convince a buyer has become more and more important and another important point which you brought out about uh, on a larger size so customers do prefer uh, and with the hybrid environment uh, of work going on you know so there is definitely a need for a larger you know apartments uh, uh, maybe rishab you know coming to you you know you you been doing projects uh, you know in in a different markets uh, right so how been your experience uh, and with the changing uh, buyers expectations and requirements maybe more to do with specifications quality uh, Uh, for me, I think uh, uh, for us actually, uh, the projects that we are doing they're mostly uh, luxurious, um, uh, luxury projects. Yeah, that's all right. I think there's some disturbance. Yes. Okay. So um, uh, I think in, in asking about project specifications, uh, coming back to. it will be one project specification will be the on ground on site hard physical specifications that change and the behind the scenes specification which is more to do with the customer experience which changes uh, on ground specifications you know you can call it your gym pool amenities all those specifications which, we, which amenities which we used to give earlier they're still there but now customers ask me what more what is their next so you know the things like what covid has taught us 
is work from home spaces, offices. So we are designing or we are planning to put that uh, uh, aspect into our design phase where we're seeing that, you know, we can create a two bed or a three bed along with a home space, which the customer is ready to pay for. And then looking for these differentiating factors um, like balconies, open spaces, uh, where customers want, you know, to have uh, not just those four walls, but they want to experience that balconies, which after 2013, Bombay has seen a very declining uh, stage in demand because, uh, you know, they were all paid for after 2013. Yeah. But now after COVID, that has changed a lot. And uh, I think it's the millennials, the generation uh, Y that we call, that is, uh, you know, clearly asking for these things. They're ready to pay for that extra amenity. Uh, what we are also seeing is, um, you know, the people coming and asking us about uh, uh, e-charging stations. Uh, you know, how are you going to uh, provide these things in the buildings that you're going to give us? Because they want to now move to um, uh, e-vehicles and, you know, uh, uh, not just the normal uh, petrol and car diesels. So they're asking us, you know, how, how are you providing uh, uh, charging stations, charging points? How many cars can be charged at that point? So these are, again, changing uh, on-site physical uh, things for us as architects, as developers. Uh, we're planning those spaces. We are also looking at planning, um, you know, better common spaces, which will eventually also create... Um, a uh, better community experience for the buyer, which is very, very important right now because when a buyer is buying into a property, they're, they're looking at it as a long-term thing now. So they think these are the people that I want to spend my next 20, 30 years with. My kids will grow up with their kids. So, uh, you know, those common experiences like maybe uh, children crash areas, um, work co-working spaces in the building, which is meant only for the residents. Um, properly managed societies, which along with PMCs, along with project management uh, companies. Um, so this is one which is on site. What we are also looking at uh, behind the scenes is the customer experience. You know, one of the biggest experience uh, matter is the documentation process for our property. And um, we, we are trying to see uh, from our uh, organization perspective, how we can make it in a streamlined, more transparent way where, um, you know, using apps, simple apps like DocuSign, where a document of uh, 100 pages doesn't need to be signed every single page. And obviously the government is also becoming uh, more yeah. online and they're receptive of this fact. Uh, they're accepting these documents which are signed docu on DocuSign and uh, we can do the registrations online so you don't have to wait in four hours, three hours on registration queues. So we are trying to do uh, those things. Um, Besides that, I think this is something which is a long-term vision for us. But, um, you know, one of the biggest issues with real estate has always been liquidity, that it's not a liquid asset. It's always, uh, you know, you'd have to hold on to it for like six months, five months, sometimes, sometimes a year. And uh, we're trying to see how we can integrate uh, tokenization into uh, real estate, into our projects as well. Fashion ownership is available right now, but it's mostly for commercial projects. For residential projects, this is something that we're looking at. So, yeah, that's my two cents on that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Rishab. Uh, maybe coming to you, Jay, Jay, your thoughts on the, you know, changing uh, trends uh, from a buyer's perspective? So, yeah, the wave of digital transformation has taken over real estate, like, as like as other sectors. As we move towards the younger generation of buyers, it is important to be technology-centric in our approach towards marketing to this audience. This generation of buyers lives in a fast-paced, changing lifestyle. The, the, the preference seems to be shifting towards renting over buying. So as a developer, we must understand their needs and re-evaluate our business models. So we must also not underestimate the power of data-driven decision-making while planning our new projects. We must develop robust structures after collecting and analyzing data to understand what are the requirements of the market and how best we can provide the solution. So yes, uh, technology plays a huge role in whole process of uh, for consumers as well as for the developers. I think uh, important point, I think Jay and Rishabh, you both brought out, uh, one is on the technology, uh, whether it results into tokenization or fractional ownership. We are seeing that happening in the office side. 
uh, but we will discuss more on that and also i think important point which also got discussed uh, is renting versus buying you know we've been you know uh, this is a very inherent discussion for many many years in indian real estate on a residential standpoint uh, with yields wherever they are whether it makes sense for millennials uh, you know to actually rent out we will discuss this but before that maybe you know we can push by you know you can uh, you know come in here uh and i think so a lot you know we have discussed spoken generally on the retail side consumer spends the trends uh yeah. how have you seen this shift uh and uh, more from and when we speak about buyers experiences uh you know we spoke about residential and in retail now malls are up and running we are seeing overall increase in footfalls but at the same time uh we also see a lot on uh, you know whether it's technology or um, you know online how are you seeing that overall trend emerging uh, from a from a buyer's experiences uh, perspective yeah so uh, you know as far as uh, malls and i would say retail spaces are concerned one of the biggest trends that you will get to see is uh, people are more into omni channel retailing i'm talking from mm. a retailer standpoint mm. uh, which means a lot of discoverability will continue to happen digitally and people will come to experience things physically with mm. this uh, we've seen uh, when it comes to shopping it's highly uh, omni channel oriented now mm. on the other hand when it comes to fnb uh we in dlf as you know have really gone high on fnb and uh, that has really boomed uh, even post covid during covid you see that the boost in fnb was rather high because uh, i strongly believe and always have believed that people india you know we all like to shop in communities we are community led friends led etc cetera, etc cetera. and hence that physical uh, connect is going to be always the hero in terms of mm. our shopping uh, and uh, dining requirements mm. so uh, to that extent i think we in dlf we always keep a huge focus on experiential retailing so you come to our properties you will see that experiential retailing played out now how that plays out is um, we looked at say avenue avenue is a property in saket which we opened during covid so we had mm. to you know adapt to the growing trends so what we did is uh, i increased alfresco dining in a big way during uh, covid and that has become a new trend for fnb alfresco dining is what they seek what they love and uh, now when it comes to consumers consumers are going to be continuing with digi payments they love the qr coding um, the way we order menus the way the qr coded menus is here to stay i don't think it's going to go away um, what is also happening is there is a lot in terms of the entry experiences in a property and ongoing experiences in a property is highly tech savvy now whatever tech adaptation we had taken on we are retaining those uh, so i would say high on technology that's going to remain um the food and beverage experience will be far more experiential in nature and uh, people want to experiment home chefs mm. different kinds of chefs all that will come in uh, into play in a big way and uh, shopping will be digitally discovered and physically you know digital discovered and physically enjoyed mm. these are the yeah. three things that i can think of right great and pushpa just to you know uh, follow on uh, and we when we talk about the overall consumer spend right do you think uh, an average uh, consumer is now spending more Uh, uh is that a trend you see from a you know pre turon 20 days and now so sure. i mean uh, see the footfall has come up to around 95% mm-hmm. but when it comes mm-hmm. to sales the wallet mm-hmm. spends are far higher we are standing mm-hmm. at 120% of pre covid which mm-hmm. means the persons who are coming in they're spending they're planning and mm-hmm. spending is far more mm-hmm. and this mm-hmm. is a trend that will continue the second thing that i see is that people are buying off fresh merchandise it's very interesting mm. it used to be very sale oriented uh, mm. now it's there's an antithesis of that mm. uh, people mm. are buying fresh merchandise they want mm. they know what they want they're planning their purchase mm. and uh, that uh, i will say consumers have a serious sense of you know living very well today and uh, uh, you know the yolo impact is very much there you only live once is very much visible and uh, we are looking at 
this year to be one of the best years for retail mm-hmm. in the country and BLS mm-hmm. specifically. Mm-hmm. The other thing is that uh, consumers are also uh, not just planning their shopping, they're also, you know, since they have discovered it digitally, then they know what they want and their mm-hmm. speed of purchase is really increased. And mm-hmm. because of that, we are seeing wallet sizes increasing. Example, mm-hmm. say at a mall of India, the spend mm. per footfall is one thing that we always look at. So mm. spend per footfall, say, was uh, 900 rupees mm. uh, pre-pandemic. It's gone up mm. to 1,300 rupees now. That mm. means every mm. person who comes in is spending that much more. Mm. You know, So that's mm. an interesting thing that is happening. Mm. And this is here to stay because um, the economy is mm. really looking good in terms of retail spends. We do mm. think that uh, this is a nascent point, point for retail and, uh, you know, it will pivot into a stronger uh, retail spend for us in the next five years. When mm. it look, when I talk about categories, mm. categories like athleisure have done very well during COVID. Um, mm. How well will it continue to grow and do is a matter mm. of, you know, speculation, but it mm. really did well. Luxury did fantastically well because international mm. travel was low, but... Yeah. Um, even continuing, I do see luxury spends to become higher. Uh, so some of these interesting trends have come and uh, we do believe that um, we retail will find an expression in all aspects of our lives. Mm-hmm. Great. Uh, thanks, uh, Pushpa. Uh, I think it was also great to hear the you know average uh, spend on a footfall is increasing. And I think that this trend we are seeing across not only for retail, even for real estate, right? Absolutely. And maybe Jay, yeah. Yeah, and Jay, maybe if, you know, I can, you know, you can come in here and you know, uh, the the sales uh, over in last two years uh, and across markets, uh, you know, whether we go east, west, north, south, mid income, affordable, luxury, everything has been selling well, uh, and you know, despite the interest rate hikes, inflation, you know, it's it's holding up uh, pretty well. Uh, 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 does that give you comfort, and you go into comfort zone, or you think you know we you know you know this possibly uh, you know it's going to be challenged to sustain this going forward? So as I said earlier, uh, using the full potential of digital tools that we have mm-hmm. at our disposal in today's mm-hmm. world is a need of the heart. Sales and marketing are two terms that people often club together, but they are very different. Like marketing is highly technical and layered process that starts even before the project is started. Mm. Through data Mm. collection and analysis, we can understand Mm. the demand of the market and plan Mm. our projects accordingly. So today we have international property consultants, research agencies who have Mm. like sound knowledge of the trends and can advise us like what are the gaps in the market and Need, which needs to be addressed through project planning branding advertising we will able to identify reach and satisfy our targeted audience mm. so you using the most potential tool of advertising that is mm. social media mm. uh, which, which can give the good results so in my opinion innovation in sales and marketing means simply moving ahead with the times in mm. in in the olden days we used to build a property then look for the buyers so mm. but now with our consumer becoming smarter day by day mm. we we must understand the buyers demands and then build the properties yeah okay thanks jay uh, uh, rishab uh, uh, your thoughts uh, around and i think so you got the point of tokenization as well and if at all we look at the entire, entire metaverse you know universe where uh, buying a flat uh, even without visiting the site, uh, right? Do you think that is something which a millennial is now expecting uh, and you see that going in a big way from a sales and, you know, marketing standpoint? Um, definitely, yes. Um, because it's not just, you know, I'm not saying that Metaverse land is a good investment or, you know, investing that piece. I, I don't think about that. I But the tech is there. The tech is correct. So mm-hmm. for me, I'm going to utilize that tech as a marketing tool. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to, I'm, if, if, if you say that, how are we going to use it? It's going to be used as showcasing my apartments in the metaverse. So you don't have to leave your house. You can be sitting in London and still view my house real time. Um, mm-hmm. The booking process is easier. The title deeds are much faster, much easier. Uh, you have uh, the tech which is available. So, you know, the blockchain model 
definitely enables the real estate industry to be more transparent, which was lacking a few years ago. And it's not just going to be the millennials, it's actually going to be um, the next generation, Gen Zs. They're going to be more uh, incorporating of this culture. So, yes, it is yeah. definitely going to help. Yeah. Thanks, Rishabh. Uh, Anuj, your thoughts uh, on uh, the overall use of technology and from your perspective, how are you integrating, you know, the use of technology with your overall sales, marketing in the CRM? Um, so technology has been a um, great boon for us in the last couple of years. But um, I definitely feel that in real estate, one needs to balance out the amount of technology you plan to integrate, implement into your platforms also. Because mm-hmm. end of the day, it's a very emotional um, process to buy a home. Be it you're buying a home, buying an expensive bag, wallet or purse. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, your entire family tends to get involved and different mm-hmm. members have different levels of technological savviness. Mm-hmm. So um, we at Dosti, we have tried to implement technology ever since the pandemic has struck in multiple manners also, be it in our pre-sales vertical, how do we connect with the customer within a half an hour turnaround time after the put mm. the lead online, be it in our, <clears throat> sorry, um, be it in our corporate website or landing pages. Even from a booking point of view, when the customer shows up in our sales office, it's always handy Uh, excuse me. Um, it's always handy for our sales managers to have their past information pulled up in a quick second or so compared to again get reoriented to the customer, understand their requirements, their preferences, and their decisions. Similarly, when it comes to um, uh, customer relationship management, customer service, and facility management for a large IT park or corporate park, that is where technology has really helped us out. I would say across our IT parks in Thane and Wagle estate, we have implemented um, a 3D technology that's called like a building information modeling to understand clash management, understand what's going wrong with the services. When we are maintaining a bustling IT park with more than 8,000 employees walking in, walking out daily, you have Mm. to have all the systems working in a very efficient manner. And uh, with the help of um, uh, modeling the entire building and its services, we're able to preempt certain risks and certain issues that may come up in the next few days. So we are able to arrest the issue before it actually props up. Similarly, when it comes to providing customer updates regarding the um, progress of construction, progress of finishing, when do we plan to hand over, or even getting their um, legal documents, be it their agreement for sale, all of that has been digitized and put onto a customer portal at Dosti, where they're able to access all of it through a click, click, click of a button, be it on mobile phones, tablets, or desktops also. But um, as I said that we are always looking to strive a balance between technology and uh, maintaining the physical gesture relationship, because real estate is a very, very emotional and it's one of your I would say in a family's lifetime, in an individual's lifetime, it's the only time he's going to buy a house probably once in his lifetime. So um, definitely with metaverse and uh, various, um, I would say, cryptocurrency gaining more and more traction day by day, I find um, real estate is always going to remain, I would say, 50% technology, 50% in person. Yeah, uh, interesting, Anuj. And you know, just an overall, you know, point. Uh, I, I think when Pushpa also mentioned that there's a clear, uh, you know, flight to luxury, right? People are spending more. People want better quality. And in fact, you know, Risha, Anuj, you and I mean, Jay also, you know, mentioned about it. Uh, so you know, uh, I think the another point is that you know, from a real estate residential standpoint, uh, is luxury uh, now a statement of a big size uh, uh, or a big or a better quality or a better product? What is you know, uh, you know, when we talk about entire better experience luxury, what is it, right? So uh, or is it a combination of all the factors uh, which together make it uh, you know much better product? Say what we used to see a two year, three years back. 
Uh, Rishab, your thoughts? Um, so, uh, there, there are two ways to look at this. Uh, size is definitely not the concern. Uh, hmm. It's more about... Um, uh, you know the the amenities, the the wellness um, open spaces that the project has to offer. Um, you know, for example, a project in Goregaon. I'm just talking about micro markets over here in Bombay. Uh, a project in Goregaon can cost forty thousand rupees a square feet, and the same mm-hmm. in Worli can also cost forty thousand rupees a square feet. So right mm-hmm. now, it's not any more a luxury that you're living in South Bombay because mm-hmm. the same amenities, the same uh, finishes. Mm-hmm. And the same status can be attained at Goregaon or Malad as well. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I mean, size is not the uh, only criteria that someone should or would look at right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, someone can buy a one crore apartment, two crore apartment, but it's also uh, comes with the tagline that, oh, I live in this property. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that okay. is what creates a luxury level for them. Right. I, 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 Jay, uh, uh, you know, coming to you, uh, uh, from, a, from a customer standpoint, uh, I think we have spoken about the product uh, from, from the buyer experiences. From the developer standpoint, what are a you know, few things which a customer now looks at? Okay, these are three things I would want to look up into a developer from his credential standpoint. So, yeah, first customer firstly will go with the uh, known brand. They'll not uh, risk their money since uh, major money are like major uh, savings of their uh, life are involved in the real estates. Other than uh, that, real estate is a very local market. So it's uh, micro pockets will do well, especially in metros. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Sure. Yeah, real estate has been, uh, uh, you know, for the last many years, we have seen, uh, except now from office standpoint, we still see uh, developers uh, doing projects uh, from one market on the project for residential predominantly has remained, uh, you know, uh, local uh, play. Uh, Pushpa, you know, now from a, you know, from a retail standpoint, uh, you know, since we are seeing a good frenzy on, you know, customer spending, uh, you know, per person spend is increasing. Will we see more more of malls coming in? Uh, you know, because if at all uh, we talk about India from our retail or a mall market vis-a-vis any other global markets, you know, uh, we can just count the number of good operating malls which are five hundred thousand or million square feet plus, right? Um, do you think this is now uh, a phase for next few years' time where uh, in the overall real estate development we will see more of malls and more of malls operators? You know. In, in India, we don't have mall operators. You know, you all have been doing and maybe we can just name a couple of more on a pan-India you know, perspective. So you think this is a phase for next few years' time, you know, uh, where, you know, we will have evolution of newer malls as well as, uh, you know, mall operators? Sorry, Pushpa, you're on mute. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so I think uh, I can tell you that uh, we... Within the industry, I see a lot more uh, expansions happening, especially in the tier two, tier three cities. I do see a a rush for new properties finally happening. Uh, When it comes to DLF, we are actually declared yesterday in our board meeting also that we are doubling our portfolio. And so we will be doubling our retail portfolio. Uh, We will be uh, setting up... uh, malls in the high street spaces as plazas mm-hmm. which is anchoring our residential development and i wouldn't call them malls exactly but plazas high street shopping there would be a um, very nice premium property that we have already started constructing in goa it's called dlf avenue that's a 650000 square feet property uh, there is of course the expansion at vasant kunj and there is a big one that we are planning um, all of this, we will be, we are very serious about doubling our portfolio, which is currently at 4.5. Our retail is also expanding in the offices space. We have a lot of amenities, you know, office amenities, which uh, we do believe that um, the amenity has to be the third place for people to come back to office and enjoy their life. Uh, So there's a lot of focus on retail Within the office complexes also, currently I'm setting up at least four of them uh, across the country. So yes, we are going pan-India, be it through retail and offices or focused around Delhi and CR or, uh, you know, good pockets like Goa. 
uh, we are looking at retail seriously. We do think that this is a great expansion time. And uh, as we are bullish about retail growing over the next five, six years, this is the yeah. right time to do so. Yeah, great. Um, so mixed use, possibly, you know, larger developments is kind of, uh, maybe is this a mantra, maybe Rishabh uh, or Anu, your thoughts? Uh, would you see uh, as a... Uh, uh, as one of the amenities uh, to the customers that are having an integrated development, uh, maybe a small retail, uh, or large, if at all, the overall layout permits, is that the need of the hour? Um, uh, I feel absolutely it is the um, highly need of the hour also. Mm -hmm. Many of our past developments, be it in Vadala, Shivri or Sayan, they are very um, uh, 95 to 98 percent residential focused mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. there's a very small portfolio left for some commercial units and retail shops but looking back we feel if we had provisioned for maybe a few restaurants some mm -hmm. some it stores some retail mm -hmm. shopping and created mm -hmm. a promenade mm -hmm. um that location would become i would say a uh, um a, a, a more bustling location down the line compared mm. to doing a very residential focus development. You are in it, you put your heart out for four or five years and then you exit entirely. Mm. But having a retail, even a developer has a chance to maintain the properties by himself and be involved with the community for many, many years to go. So we are trying in our new developments, be it in Dosti West County at Thane, or at Dosti mm. Planet North and in Dosti Pune and Harapsar, mm. we are always looking to integrate a 20 to 25 percent aspect of retail to ensure mm. the um to, to give the end user a mixed use development. Yeah, sure, sure. Rishab, your thoughts? Um, so I feel it is it is a good idea to have a mixed use development, uh, depending on the developer strategy all the way. Because uh, you know, a lot of developers they end they tend to sell the retail portion, and then uh, the retail actually becomes a nuisance rather than a convenience, and uh, that's the reason that you should have uh, you know a more um, uh, moderated uh, retail sector where you know that these are the items or these are the people or brands that will come into the building, and this goes along with the status of the building or status of the project. So if there's a launder, you know which laundry guy to come in, you know which supermarket to bring in, you know which coffee shop to bring in, you don't have like a, a nightclub going on down at the retail store. So yeah. yeah, so all those things need to be managed carefully when you have retail, but of course it does uh, bring in a lot of convenience if managed carefully. Yeah, I think one of the I think the point which we discussed uh, or we just mentioned was uh, the millionaire's choice of uh, renting versus buying uh, real estate. Uh, at one end, for last two years, definitely, you know, the demand has been strong. Uh, you know, people have been buying apartments, uh, but uh, with the changing preferences, uh, you know, and you know, the rental yields generally where they are where they are, and the interest rates are also are you know, uh, you know, always always over seven percent. The differential is always likely to remain. Uh, and the way the newer set of buyers who are in mid late twenties or early thirties, they were thinking: Are we thinking? Are we thinking from a long term trend perspective, a more a renting decision versus uh, buying an apartment? Maybe Jay, you know, uh, your thoughts uh, on that? So it all depends on your uh, like future cash flow. If if you are uh, doing stable job, then yeah, you should go for uh, buying the home. And if you are into some uh, some industry where, where your cash flow is not secured for future mm. five, 10 years, then you should go for uh, renting the property. Mm. This is my yeah. view. Yeah. But from a financial perspective, uh, 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 Rishab, your thoughts? Uh, I'm sure when people do a math, I borrow at 7% and I'm staying in an asset which just gives me 2%. Uh, is that uh, what kind of uh, thought goes in today's uh, set of buyers? Uh, you know, conventionally, we've always seen that it's a more of an emotional decision, you know, as a family, you know, we all want to own an apartment and stay in that apartment which we own. But is there a possible structural change in the trend we likely to see or are we seeing, are we seeing that on ground? Um, I would think that, you know, considering that, you know, you will only be renting all your life is more of a, uh, a naive decision. Uh, 
as a financial advice i wouldn't recommend anyone to go for it you should have at least that idea that 5 years down the line i want to buy an apartment or that should be a goal um, or a house i whatever it is um but the idea should be to create that asset because um, you know with real estate this is the old age the theory that buy real estate and wait don't wait to buy real estate so uh, you know you buy the real estate keep it because that is your hedge against the next 1000 square feet of apartment that you want to buy after 30 years or your kids want to move into a bigger apartment so if you are buying the 1000 square feet at today's rate mm. next 30 years down the line when your son wants to buy an apartment that 1000 square feet is secured fully mm. so you will be able to buy move maybe 1200 or 1500 square feet uh, regardless like a lot of times you know you will hear a uh, family chats happening where uh, you know your dad must have bought an uh, apartment at 1 lakh rupees a uh, full apartment and today that i rate is like 1 lakh rupees per square feet and you <laughs> tell them that why didn't you buy it why didn't you buy more at that time and they will be mm-hmm. like you know why don't you do it right now that's the same mm-hmm. idea mm-hmm. yeah so, yeah rish uh, anuj your thoughts uh, and when you you know talk to your friends and you interact with so many buyers you know is this the uh, thought or a decision making making point uh, uh, from a buyer's perspective Uh, I partly do agree with um both um what Jay and Rishab mentioned that it's always linked to your cash flows and at what stage in life you are. But um uh, if you are at that stable stage in life and you have a um uh, you have a well paying salary in, in income coming in every month on month, mm-hmm. I would always advise that one goes to um buy the property compared to rent it. Mm-hmm. We have seen, in fact, um after the advent of COVID. the mm-hmm. amount of renting done in our ready possession projects has gone down drastically mm-hmm. and uh, more of tenants are in fact buying what they have been staying in for the last 10 12 years or so earlier mm-hmm. they would think we are not spending much we are spending a percent or two every month or so mm-hmm. but um they have also taken that call that let's not mm-hmm. stay on the rent and let's mm-hmm. just buy the property instead mm-hmm. and uh, definitely as a financial advisor one would look at it that you may be making 7 to 9% as where in commercial real estate you may make 2 to 3% in in mumbai mmr mm-hmm. but that's just i would say um numbers numbers in a excel or numbers in a board also mm-hmm. having a property the, the, i would say the the value and our um indian culture and indian mm-hmm. minds in fact across the world as well owning a property mm-hmm. and the respect the reputation the family life that comes with it mm. is always different compared to mentioning that a particular person is staying on the rent versus a particular person owns a house mm. Mm. no no absolutely i think uh, hence you know even after all what we speak you know in last two years time the 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 demand still holds uh, you know holds well and now we are moving towards second homes uh, luxury homes so uh, despite being on the negative uh, you know yields negative interest rates on residential but we still see this but to that i think though another point uh, uh, i think though which comes across is how to you know maximize returns in a residential property and hence the you know question comes on uh, like a model of fractional ownership or uh, uh, a co living uh, student housing uh, senior living which i think also is getting you know the need of the hour where the overall trends are changing uh, 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 how you know from we all you know residential you know as a developer perspective uh, you think this also now forms an integral part of uh, your strategy to grow your portfolio uh, having these shared living whether it's seniors uh, student uh, or co living uh arishab uh, uh, we'll start with you um so in our certain projects where uh, ticket sizes are convenient enough for co living mm-hmm. places like the 300 mm-hmm. to 400 square feet uh, over mm-hmm. there there are these options where we can explore where there are bigger apartments uh, it's little difficult to uh, match the gentry so mm-hmm. that's the reason that we avoid doing that but uh, uh, specifically if made for co living it's it's a great product Uh, but you need to design this beforehand rather than you know build it and then try and achieve the maximum ROI out of it so um, yeah it's it's a good idea in fact uh, co living shared living and uh, like you mentioned senior living that is another concept which is coming out uh, 
in order to maximize your ROIs, there are a lot of ways. I mean, you can also buy second homes, uh, you know, put it on Airbnbs, use different platforms that are available for weekly stays, which are giving like phenomenal returns right now. They're giving about uh, 25, 27% per annum after, uh, you know, deducting all the uh, expenses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Jay, your thoughts, are, do, you see, do you see demand, enough demand for, uh, uh, say, a co-living or a student housing? So yeah, co-living, fractional ownership, all are relatively new to the Indian real estate market. But yeah, it's growing. Real estate investment are best type of investment due to its high uh, asset appreciation. So mm-hmm. invest investor can utilize their financial uh, uh, owner like their investment uh, in mm-hmm. co-living or uh, senior living or maybe in a fractional ownership. They can diversify their uh, investment. Yeah. Uh, Pushpa, your thoughts? Because uh, you know, uh, you know, as a retailer, uh, you uh, we all tend to have and interact with the actual millennials, hundreds and thousands of you know, you know, customers on a daily basis. Uh, you see that millennial thought process, uh, you know, is now you know is basically spent now, right? Or what we call as BNPL, buy now, pay later. Uh, is this the overall trend which possibly uh, structurally we're going to see in next few years to come? Sorry, Pushpa, you're on mute. Uh, see, I think uh, typically what would tend to happen is that uh, millennials uh, pre-COVID were anti-buying houses. You know, there was a whole wave going on about. Now with their COVID experience, I think... The, um, Whoever we sort of talk and do consumer research on, service apartment will be something that will really take traction, according to us. Mm. Studio mm. apartments in so mm. downtown spaces, in Gurgaon, etc. Service mm. apartments, studio apartments will gain traction. Uh, mm. That's one category that you can see will grow. Beyond mm. that, uh, I think what will tend to happen is there'll either be the studio apartments or there'll be large mm. homes, large apartments. Mm. Mm-hmm. So then we mm-hmm. and, and uh, those people who can afford, they will go in for the larger apartments, slightly in the suburbs. And uh, so mm-hmm. that's the trend that you see, because uh, today when we launched a lot of those independent floors, even in New Gurgaon, there's a lot of mm-hmm. traction even there because it's mm-hmm. affordable, it's larger living space and people mm-hmm. don't mind. And uh, what's happening mm-hmm. is with hybrid culture, mm-hmm. uh, people are going to their work maybe twice mm-hmm. a week. Uh, mm. or you know so the other times they are there so the traffic they have to beat only twice a week that's mm. the way they're looking at it and hence they are moving to larger homes in the suburbs and mm. uh, however millennials who want to live in downtown where mm. there's a pressure for uh, you know housing mm. uh, it would mm. be small apartments mm. yeah i think studio service apartments uh, is clearly the trend which i think you possibly are seeing in all the markets and another one is also doing plotted uh, or uh, villas uh, maybe you know in on outskirts uh, yeah. you know so maybe that again the trend maybe anuj your thoughts uh, since you all also have you know uh, good land parcels around uh, say mumbai uh, do you think that is also a clearly an emerging demand uh, trend uh, for people to own plots, build their own houses uh, where they may spend good amount of time and considering there's a hybrid work culture, which is here to stay. Earlier, we thought it's a disruption, but now it's looking that, you know, this is a new norm which will remain. Do you think, again, this is a good emerging uh, asset class or the, you know, buyer's preference, uh, which we will see? Um, while it's a relatively new concept for the last mm-hmm. three to four years or so, it has mm-hmm. gained a lot of traction in certain parts of MMR. And uh, it's always linked to, I would say, um, the, the given value of the land also. Because mm-hmm. especially across MMR, land values have been artificially raised up and risen. So mm-hmm. unless a developer has a given land parcel, which is... Mm-hmm where he can afford to not consume full FSI sure. and uh, do yeah. a kind of plotted living or villa style living, maybe mm. in Alibag or somewhere. That's mm. where he can explore an option like this. Mm. But um, apart from that, I feel if you, if a, if a developer has parked a couple of acres in, in the far off places like a Badlapur or Karjat, mm. 
all of these mm-hmm. areas did extremely well in the in the covid in, in covid and even after covid i think land prices have more than doubled in those areas in fact mm-hmm. so it's good but as long as the the landowner is able to afford losing fsi even when when it mm-hmm. comes to senior living it's mm-hmm. always popular for senior living to have low rise structures whereas mm-hmm. the fsi across mumbai thane delhi is so high that to consume or to recover your cost you have to plan 18 to 20 floors and higher that mm. de encourages seniors to come and stay with you in the first place mm. so you have to find the right balance and then go for it i feel yeah no, no absolutely anuj uh, and uh, and uh, you know maybe we just last few minutes uh, in the discussion i think one point we just wanted to discuss was on the fractional ownership uh you know this has been going around uh, you know well on the office side and obviously the yields what we have also supported uh, uh, uh it, it, how you know from our you know investor standpoint and how you know you develop the thinking is do you think the even fraction ownership in residential uh, also uh, possibly may gain traction and considering you know the returns can be maximized by uh, you know a co-living uh, kind of a concept or a managed uh, residences or a service residences maybe rishab your thought um so fraction ownership today is uh, really not very applicable in terms of uh, residential it's because mm-hmm. exactly what you said it's because of the low roi mm-hmm. uh, the yield is almost 1 and 1/2 2% especially in metros um but uh, if taken uh, from scratch from uh, you know if it is if the if the deal is done beforehand um yes the project can make sense but obviously we are waiting to see something like this happen uh, even developers in mumbai are waiting that there is a fraction ownership kids who are sitting out there and he's going to come and put in 1000 crores uh, but uh, yet yet to be seen Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, you know, I think before we go uh, for my any question, which possibly the audience may have, uh, you know, maybe a last thought, uh, you know, from all, uh, you know, four of you, top, you know, two or maybe top three things which uh, you know you are seeing a clear shift uh, from a buyer's perspective or a new millionaire spending perspective in last two two year, no, two and a half years time. Maybe Pushpa, we can start from you. um the millennials are concerned well uh, their decisions will be tech inspired we have to keep that in mind uh, in all sectors of real estate mm-hmm. it will be tech inspired for sure the second thing that i see is uh, millennials are going to be uh, going f- to go for brands which they trust i think the trustability of uh, brands and how much the brands are into say sustainable uh, clothing sourcing right all that will make a big difference in their choice of brands um the third and um, is also the fact that uh, they would like a lot more alfresco in their f&b there's they are looking for more character you know overall sure. if i see they're looking for trust soul and character far sure. more than what the previous generation did sure thanks pushpa uh, ajay yeah this generation knows like what what they want they are very specific and clear with their requirements so yeah they'll go with the brand then amenities and the location and the crowd in the uh, society yeah sure anuj um uh, i think millennials in today's times or i would say in the future as well are have shifted their focus heavily on the wellness aspect for a project they consider the open space the size of the clubhouse the gymnasium the spa the steam sauna and uh, if um, i mean they, they are they, they are lucky that there are a couple of such land passes still available in the city mm-hmm. but um these projects are always i would say stand out compared to other projects for a millennial mm-hmm. secondly um uh, something that will eventually become i would say a millennial preference or would be forced upon them by global investors also would be defining the carbon footprint also used by the project be it in terms of giving cheaper access to home loans faster processing time for home loans if your carbon footprint is limited that is going to spur millennials towards a particular project or entity or location and uh, thirdly 
millennials are always looking for that one brand that's been there for maybe number of generations and years the legacy behind the brand be it generations have changed but the brand has the same motto and the same vision so these aspects would determine what a millennial would go for for, for times to come ahead sure thanks anuj uh, rishab um so a point to me i just want to uh, give a different perspective uh, on the last topic what anuj said that a you know a brand which is there since existing since generations and that is what the millennials will trust uh, it's only because real estate is such a expensive product that you know they they want to just uh, keep it in mind that uh, you know these guys are the guys who are delivering over the past and not just someone who's going to you know a ponzi scheme uh, other than that but uh, more importantly a brand which will directly appeal to their needs uh, you know create more common spaces create uh, uh, different things about uh, like you know co working spaces or uh, uh, have different parking systems in place these are the brands which will actually connect with their needs uh, rather than someone who's already been there since ages uh, you know someone who can actually connect with each and every pinpoint demand uh, that is what i think uh, will create the next brand sure uh, thanks uh, rishab i think so very interesting points uh, you know brought out in the discussion today uh, there's a clear uh, you know flight to quality buyer experiences i think we spoke about carbon foot- footprint in terms of ev uh, you know having ev stations you know for example uh, technology inspiration i think the technology is the moot point whether it's meta metaverse or uh, you know touchless points uh, you know good important point also is that millennials still prefer to buy you know, at least that's what the the panelists today thinks uh, and which is also clearly also evident uh, you know in in the trend retail spends uh, have been good uh, in fact it's uh, you know much higher uh, as in pushpa mentioned uh, you know from the pre covid days so i think overall i think we look uh, to be you know ending entering into a good structural uh, you know up cycle from overall realist as a realist it is concerned uh, so the good times which we been witnessing in last maybe 12 to 15 months time uh, is are here to stay uh, uh sapna uh, you know uh, uh, i think we are possibly i don't know whether you on time over time uh, you know over to you we are known to keep the session on time piyush so uh, we are definitely on time i'll quickly take the audience question with uh, pushpa because she has to leave for another meeting um, you know uh, uh, one question we have asked that uh, you know last 2 3 years we saw that how younger generation is now very keen to buy property but the recent property prices high the interest rate high have all these things impacted the sentiments what is your observation well as i said i think uh, there are a lot of these first time buyers we are seeing in with our independent floors you know uh, we are seeing a lot of that and i also feel that in future when we do mixed use developments we are coming up with a very large mixed use development where service apartments could well be a way uh, forward you know so i think there will be changes and trends that we will see going forward uh which may not be the usual kind of apartments that we've seen so far these would be much more end user oriented that's right very new trends that are coming in thanks pushpa uh pure going to you you are in thick of the things from the buyers and as well as from the industry point of view pushpa mentioned lot of new trends you mentioned about fractional ownership and others uh and now a lot of new options for investment have come up just you know investing in property is not there there are reits there are fractional there are you know real uh, real estate mutual funds are you seeing you know the younger generation now more uh, probably going inclined towards these new products or how is it no so uh, i think it's a good point uh, sapna you mentioned uh, see real estate traditionally always was uh, you know uh, you know we looked at it upon as owning an asset it required large money large capital and always it was always difficult to buy and sell uh, but with all the newer concepts whether we talk about reits or fraction ownership it's kind of desegmented the entire industry today by you know by investing 10000 rupee one can invest in reit by investing uh, you know few lakhs one can have a exposure on the office property so uh, not only millennials and i think so entire generation possibly uh, you know look forward to expose themselves to real estate and there are just multiple avenues which have opened up 
and this will just uh, grow bigger and bigger uh, sapna yeah so i think it has kind of democratized the entire yeah. uh, real estate now for for even the small investors who want yeah. to start small now going back to the same question that i had put up with pushpa you know going to rishab uh, anuj and jay uh, do you see the uh, you know the the younger generation buyer sentiments getting impacted due the, to the new developments of price hike interest rate hike rishab starting from you uh actually i feel the other way around uh, i feel uh, you know the price may have increased in the short term but it has decreased if you see over the last 3 years 4 years the interest rates have decreased considerably in fact uh, if you would have seen a few articles mr deepak parekh himself had said that he's never seen a cheaper interest rate and this is the best time to buy a house so considering uh, you know mr deepak parekh saying this i think all over india everyone should trust his opinion on this it's the right time to buy the house correct maybe i think it has created in fact even more urgency to you know invest now before they go higher exactly so, so like how someone said about yolo before that this is the fomo so you don't the fear of missing out so you don't miss right. out on anything correct so anuj what's your thoughts on this you know has it you know uh, you know uh in worse proportion to that you know they are now urgent you know urgency in buying property or they have now you know it's wait and watch for them um it's actually um the um variable market to market also so where um what we are seeing based upon live data for the last 3 months is that for our more affordable markets beyond mumbai in thane and beyond thane that's where due to rises in interest rates the decision making time has increased people are taking more than 90 days to convert a property which did earlier take about 60 75 days whereas for uh, central mumbai and uh, sobo it has nominally or very marginally or there's been almost no impact also we're seeing people are realize this is the best time to buy a property and actually the volume of sales has increased out there and at the same time lot of developers including us are offering some incentive schemes to customers wherein we are capping the home loan rate for the first 2 to 2 and a half years from a 25 to 30 year home loan and we expect till the time the home loan is capped the interest rates will again come down to sub 7% so whatever loss is to be borne by the customer that hit is being taken on by the developer in a way okay that's right so uh, you know uh, jay coming to you is this the right time to buy proper property what is your so, uh, uh, do interested uh, like increase by 1% or so still it's the lowest in the history interest rate is still lowest in the history and as we always say roti kapda makan is our uh, basic uh, requirement and basic necessity so yeah this is the best time to Okay, fantastic. Deal. So before we close this session, Piyush, let me come back to you again. Uh, you've been part of the industry. You have interacted with first generation of developers, second generation. Now we are seeing even third generation coming in. I'm not that old, uh, Sapna. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't look. I'm sure. <laughs> But we have third generation also now coming in. So how, how are you seeing this entire, you know, interactions changing with with you know when you're uh, talking to the first generation, the second generation, and now, in fact, Sangeeta Prasad was of the view that every five years, you know, the entire scenario changes, the mindset change. So we should not be talking about second generation, but multi generation now, the brothers. Yeah. Uh, five years change no no absolutely the point uh, and especially from real estate standpoint you know every 10 years the way real estate is done has changed the developers way they think they have changed even the developers themselves have changed right so uh, now from the 10 years it's become 5 years right so you know if at all uh, we interact with someone who is 5 years younger to us right you will interact you will realize that they think very differently and today i think it's very important is technology i think with all the panelists brought out uh, the point and anyone who is able to adopt technology the fastest uh, and implement it is kind of go ahead in the race so uh, and definitely younger generation will definitely have a much easier and a better flight to adopt technology so i think it's great to you know see newer thoughts newer ideas uh, and hence you know we see there are so many new ideas uh, what changes we have seen in last 3 to 4 years time in real estate or last 5 years time in real estate in terms of newer products uh, newer different quality different concepts 
is a clearly a uh, vindication that the new generation uh, the way they are thinking and way they implementing things is it's really you know way to go and possibly you know real estate it will move uh, towards how the developed markets are uh, i'm sure much sooner than what we all think that's right i think we are on the right track and the younger generation is taking it you know forward in a very accelerated way with many new ideas and technology as you mentioned and let me tell you you are the youngest moderator we have today in this entire conclave so, great to you <laughs> So fantastic! This was a fantastic session. Our regrets on behalf of Nayan Raja and Sartha Gaur. In fact, because you know, uh, last minute uh, unavoidable circumstances, they could not join. Although they were very keen to be on part of the be part of this very young panel, but uh, we had a very good conversation with all the younger generation of uh, developers. Piyush was there, and he had similar thoughts what others had expressed. They say yes, you know, the real estate is is the right time to. be part of the real estate growth story so thank you so much everyone uh, piyush gupta for so wonderfully moderating the panel once again risha for being here with us i am i know you are out of india but still you joined us from there thank you so much anuj for being here part of this conclave and jay for being here with us again pushpa for being here with us and being part of this uh, very informative and uh, you know interesting discussion thank you so much everyone thank you thanks thank you all thank you thank you piyush thank you sapna thank you anuj